Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're playing with some Eidolon variants, an Eidolon Zodiac Beast variant to be precise, and this is a build that was inspired by a deck that I saw do well at a tournament over in the OCG, and I obviously brought it over and changed some ratios around and TCGized it by allowing Norden to be in the list because that card's banned in the OCG, but it has an insane amount of value in this deck specifically because of its interactions with bringing back Marmorats for insane amounts of XC summons and stuff like that, but overall, this is a very, like, I don't want to say bland deck list, but it looks very cookie cutter in terms of, like, what's in it. It's just a bunch of different engines, the Eidolon Beast engine, the Zodiac Beast engine, and then playing these cards in your extra deck, you know, it's, it's pretty, it should be pretty standard in terms of how it looks. Um, in terms of you're playing your Zodiac Beast Exceases that you get to step up into, and then the only real rank 4s you play otherwise are double Digesto Emerald to make your engine infinite, as well as like Yagaga Samurai for the OTK, or it could be like a Dweller in this slot or something like that, but really, the only rank 4s you're realistically playing are these because Drancia does so much work. And then you also have the fusion aspect of your engine that you get to fall back on, usually in the form of Merkaba to, you know, fusion summon into a Solemn Judgment. And then also, you know, when you do that, you're going to be shuffling your fusion spell back into your deck to add a laser back to your hand, meaning that every time you summon this card, you are guaranteed a negation for monster effects, which is actually really cool. And then just other things in general. Uh, the other ones don't really come up that much, but the fact that you can banish cards from your opponent's graveyard makes it like more likely to come up, especially in the case of like Rydeen. Uh, but like Purgatorio is just a nice game ender because it attacks everything and it gains attack for your opponent's boards. And then, you know, your big vanilla earth monster that is obviously good in this deck because you're loading your graveyard with tons of earths off your zodiac beast engine so this is a very like bland list in my opinion but it was inspired by an ocg list that did well um and plays you know searchable targets to you know make your purgatorio live plays hand traps it just it looks very very much like a cookie cutter like starting deck list I, i'd imagine but anyway enough talking about this deck list let's just jump straight into the first game and uh see see exactly how this deck can function so, going into the first game, I get to start, which is very much to my advantage, because much like Metal Foes and ABC, this deck generates monster defenses, and that's very, very good for you going forward. And you can do it with or without the Zodiac Beast engine. As you see here, I don't really start with the Zodiac Beast engine. I don't start with Marmorat or anything like that, but I'm able to rank 4 with a Thrasher and an uh, Alaster into Bullhorn, searching my Marmorat for a next follow-up play and then use my summoning magic to Miracle Fuse the two cards out of my grave basically for the Merkaba, the Light Eidolon Beast. And so I'm able, to, uh, I'm able to just use these cards to my advantage as a defensive line during my opponent's turn and not really let him do anything. His opening hand was actually pretty good, all things considered, except for the fact that I had a defensive line. But I Twin Twister discarding my Momorap so that I can instant fusion it back with Norden so I can start stacking on top of it. That's actually just a really neat interaction that these cards have. The fact that your Xyz summons are one card uh, Xyz materials it means you just get to bring your Marmorat back off of, uh, off of Norden and then you leave the Norden out there to be a material for a bigger Xyz summon, a more demanding Xyz summon that you have to utilize later in the same turn. But carrying on with my play, I just keep going and I just pump out more fusions, more Xyz's, making Emerald, making Gaga Samurai have two attacks having a Drancia with a Viper underneath it so it's at 1200 and then just punching over for game. I end up negating his uh, Trick Clown so that it just doesn't float and ultimately it's just it doesn't really matter but I just wanted it banished and Merkaba does that. It banishes the card it negates regardless of where it was which is very very valuable, very premium you could say. But going second in the next game, my opponent bricked. Um, this ABC deck is just uh, showing its true colors isn't it? where you basically need the field spell to play. And the thing is, is that he drew the Trick Clown alongside the Foolish, which is a true, true brick, because if he had not drawn that Trick Clown, he could have Foolished the Trick Clown, a normal summoned one of his A, B, or C monsters in his hand, and then made a Tsukiyomi and tried to unbrick himself. But, unfortunately, that's not the case. He drew the Trick Clown alongside the Foolish, so there was no first turn play that he could make that was any sort of meaningful in terms of uh, impactfulness. But so, I'm able to do a rather, rather big Zodiac Beast play, um, stepping up into a lot of things. Now, the reason that that Marmorat is just on the board at the end of this turn is because I'd never actually read Drancia before, what its requirements were, because I've just been summoning it on top of other Zodiac Beast cards, and I didn't know that it takes four level four monsters. I thought you just, you know, needed two level fours like any other random rank four, so I was expecting to overlay with my Dragodius and my Marmorat 
into a second Drancia to have two on the field during my opponent's turn, but turns out I wasn't able to do that. <laughs> so, reading is fundamental, as they say. I did not know that the, these like Zodiac Beast cards, other than Bullhorn, required more than two level fours. Turns out Bullhorn is the only one that requires two level fours and is generic for it. And then Tigris requires three, Drancia requires four, and then Wildbow, the most horrible one, requires five level fours. I did not know that these requirements stepped up like that because I'm so used to just summoning them for free. But anyway, next game, I get to go second again because I won the previous game. And my opponent draws the field spell but draws no way to make a rank four. So uh, yeah, this ABC deck is just proving in my mind why it's just... It's further emphasizing in my mind why it's very lackluster. And this is Elvis Vu's decklist that got first place at YCS Anaheim. And it is just bricking like nobody's business. Um, it's very interesting how that is occurring. But doing a Zodiac Beast play, going into my Makaba. Um, is his name Makaba or is it Makaber? I don't know. I can't remember. I think it's Makaba. I'm going to go with Makaba. But the, uh, the light Eidolon fusion, essentially, is what I could refer to it as. Uh, I make that along with a Gaga Samurai that can attack twice. I use Drancia to pop his B, and I actually had an OTK here, and I just forgot to see it. I didn't do the math. I could have discarded the Elaster from my hand when I attacked with the Merkaba to boost it by a thousand, and as you can see, he's at 900, so he definitely would have just been dead. But I just didn't see it because I didn't do the math. I was just sitting here playing my cards and uh, and not really thinking too much in depth about it. I just knew that I was going to clear his board and then have a Drancia follow up for his field spell or for his monster. One of the two, whatever ended up being the most you know relevant thing that needed to be dealt with. And then I was basically going to win the game that turn because of the fact that I have a negation with the Merkaba with the Elaster in hand on a monster. That's what was going through my mind. I didn't really see the OTK because it just didn't occur to me. But anyway, next game, he gets to go first and finally he opens well. He finally opens with an ABC Dragon Buster and a Tsukiyomi play. And I get the Twin Twister, his two back row, just starting straight out. And then try to activate my Reckless Magic Circle, to which he banishes it so that I can't you know, attempt to search my Elaster when it resolves. As well as, since I've already activated one, I cannot activate another one this turn. And then he tags his Buster out, puts a B equipped to his C so that he doesn't lose to something like Rageki Dark Hole. Uh, like he'll still have the C on board and things like that. It's just the standard equipment play is that you put B on C so it'll fall off and it'll float and it also protects you from things like system down and stuff like that. But I don't really have a big play that I can do here so I just start stacking Zodiac Beast cards up and then I just surrender. There's there's nothing much that I'm able to do uh, in the in the case of like not letting him kill me next turn and that's that's the big issue that I have. But last game I get to go first and I start with a Photon Thrasher and Reckless Magic Circle for Elaster. I normal my Elaster and he goes ahead and activates Max C because his hand's not the greatest. He wants to draw as many cards as possible. But little does he know that because he activated that Max C, I am going to kill him this turn. I'm going to FTK him because the deck that I'm playing here is OCG inspired. And the deck that I saw is playing Manticore of Darkness in the main deck. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but way back in like 2003, Manticore of Darkness was on the Forbidden and Limited list because of this little interaction that's going on here. Once you put one Manticore of Darkness in your grave, you can discard the other one from your hand in the end phase and then send the one that you summoned on the field to the grave to summon the other one for an infinite loop, and it was an Exodia deck that did this using Carter Safe Return to infinitely draw in the end phase until you got to Exodia. So Manticore of Darkness was on the Forbidden and Limited list, can't remember if it was banned or if it was at like 1 for a, quite a long time, but these cards are Beast Warriors, and the reason it's played is because it's a Fire Beast Warrior for Purgatorio, which is a very, very good game-ending monster, but also because you can discard it off Merkaba during your opponent's turn and then float it back to the board to be a beater. But, for instances like this, your opponent max sees you, and so you just do double bullhorn searches. You don't even really require a Zodiac, as you see, I didn't require a Marmorat play. I just needed to make any rank 4, and then be able to fuse or discard one of the Manticores, because making the rank 4 makes bullhorn, then you stack an Xyz over it, and then you put the second bullhorn on top of that one, using its once per turn allowment to let you sing, uh, Xyz summon it using a Zodiac Beast as one material, and then you just search double Manticore of Darkness, and you discard one of them. And then in the end phase, you just discard the one from hand to summon the one in grave, and then the one that's now on field just gets sent to grave to summon the one that you just discarded to graveyard in an infinite loop to deck your opponent out under max C on turn one of the game. It's a neat little interaction that means that your opponent's defensive cards are definitely nowhere near as safe or potent as they once were because the only thing that stops that once it's going is some form of graveyard removal 
like D.D. Crow being drawn into off of the Max C, and in which case, then I guess you got it. But still, it's a very interesting little interaction. It's a very neat little interaction that a lot of people have forgotten about over the past, you know, 13 years since it was actually, you know, a relevant card in the format. You know, Manticore of Darkness, speaking directly thereof. But the reason it was played in the OCG list that I basically got my inspiration from was because it is a fire that you can search for you know, your fusion, you can search it off Bullhorn, and then it also just has that neat little interaction where if your opponent max sees you, congratulations, you could probably deck them out that turn, and that's the neatest thing that I can really say about the card, it's a very old interaction that's still really powerful, and even more powerful now because instead of, you know, card of safe returning your way into your own win condition, you make your opponent draw out, and it becomes a win condition, so it's, it's something I thought was neat, and I'm very, very glad I got that to happen for one of these replays. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow, and it's just the most you know reasonable way to support the channel. Also check out links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like, but as I already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, take care.